Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to look at the difference between background and overlay in SwiftUI. So backgrounds and overlays are both modifiers that allow us to easily place content either behind or on top of our views. In this video we're going to discuss the difference and when you should actually use which one. So first off let's discuss background and see how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is create a scrollable vstack and then create some text with a color background. So let's do this now. So I'm just going to create a scroll view. And then within it, we're just going to add in our VStack. Cool. And then I'm just going to do some typing where we actually add it in our text so we can actually give it a background. Okay, cool. So notice here on the screen how we have our text being rendered. And I've just added some font and padding around it to give it some space. And then what we're saying here on the end of that is you want to add a background of yellow. So notice how that when you use the background modifier with colors, it just fills up the whole view with that color so when you're working with views where you need to place something behind you actually want to use the background modifier and not overlay but we're not just limited to using colors or anything that conforms to the shape styles such as gradients materials and shapes and you can learn more about them in my videos gradients and swift ui button and styles button styles materials in swift ui and shapes in swift ui as well we can actually place views behind views as well so we can actually place a star behind our text by using an ff symbol so we'll type this one out together. So let's just copy this and then we'll just paste it below. And then what we're going to do here is that below our padding and above our background, we're just going to type out dot background. And when you're typing out dot background, you should realize that you have an option here called content. So this allows you to actually place a view behind your view. So let's hit enter like so. And then I just like having the trailing. I don't like having the parameter here. So I'm just going to delete that like so. And then within our background, what we're going to do is add in an SF symbol. So I'm just going to say image. And then the system name is going to be star. And you should see, if you look closely, that our star is now being shown behind. You should see that our star is now being shown behind our text. But it's actually quite difficult to see. So let's actually give our image the symbol variant of fill and then also as well so we can actually see that we're going to give our star the foreground color of white and then finally we're going to increase the size of our style star to 32 pixels cool so now we have a white star and we have our text within it but as you can see, our text is slightly off and it's not really in the center of the star. So in order to change this, what we can do is actually give our SF symbol within our background an offset so we can actually change it on this axis here. So let's do that now. So we're going to use the offset modifier and then we're going to delete the X parameter and then for the Y, we're just going to say negative two. And this will actually pull our star up by two pixels and now our text is centered within our star. But if you wanted to, we're not just limited to having one view within our background closure. So any views that I use within this closure are treated as if they're within a Z stack. So you can actually add more views, but it depends on the order of where it is in the Z stack of where it will be rendered on the screen. So let's create a yellow star, but this time with a circle within it, and then we'll break it down. So you can see in our third example, what we have here is it's very similar to the other ones, except this time we actually have a circle where the fill is yellow. So you can see here, because we've said that we want the circle to be first, that's what's laid out first, and then we want the star. So the star is on top of our circle within this Z stack. If you actually want to, so if you actually change the order of these two, you would actually notice that the star will be behind the circle. Well, let's actually create another example where we can actually see the circle covering the star. And as you can see here, because we said that we want our circle to be the last element within this closure, you can see here that it's now covering our star image. So depending on where you place it, you want to be careful to make sure that you've got the right order for when you're actually laying out your views in SwiftUI. So now, if we wanted to as well, we actually could control the alignment of our views. So let's actually create an example of our star without the circle in the background and we'll set the alignment of it to be top. So I'm just gonna delete this and I'm just gonna copy this here. And then we're just gonna paste this below and then I'm just gonna remove this circle because we don't really want it for this example. And then now, 
if I was to change this alignment to top, you'll see here that our star has now gone to the top. And if we wanted to, we can also change this to something like bottom. And you can see the position of it changes depending on the alignment. So you can actually control the position of where your backgrounds are in relation to the view. Cool, so now that we've covered backgrounds and its use cases, let's see how we can use overlay to add views on top of our views. Now it's worth noting that overlays are extremely similar to background in terms of the way that you handle alignment and also how the content within the closure is automatically treated like it's in a Z stack. The only difference is that rather than views going to the back, this time they go to the front. So let's see an example of this with an image. So I'm just going to add in the Tons Dev logo onto the screen. Now I already have this within my assets file within this project. So you will need to add your own image. So carrying on from before, you can see here that this time um, we've added our image, we've, give it a, we've made it resizable. We've also gave it a frame of 100 by 100. And this time for the background, we're actually using a shape this time rather than a color or a view. So we're actually able to use shapes as well within backgrounds. And we're giving it a shape of a circle and just setting the shape to be a fill of blue. Well, if we wanted to, we could actually overlay some shapes, gradients, and a whole bunch of other stuff. What we're going to overlay is our own custom text view that tells people to subscribe. So let's, first of all, type this out so first of all, let's actually type out the modifier that we're looking for. So underneath background, what we want to do is we want to use the overlay modifier. And it's worth noting that the order that you do this doesn't really matter because like I said before, overlay goes on top and background goes behind. So if you see the overlay modifier with the content closure, you want to hit enter and you should get the closure now where you're able to add in your own custom view. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So now within our overlay, we have our text that says subscribe and we just added some font styling, padding around it as well. And we're giving this text view its own background of a capsule. So we're giving it a capsule shape with a fill of red. But as you can see, by default, when you're using the overlay modifier with views like this that don't fill up the entire parent and the same applies to background, it will be centered in the middle. What we actually wanna do is change the alignment of this to be positioned at the bottom here. So in order to do that, what we're able to do is on our overlay modifier is we're able to use the alignment property similar to what we did with our background here to specify that we want this to be aligned to the bottom. So let's do that now. Cool. And as you can see now, our view goes all the way down to the bottom because we specified alignment. And if we also change this to be something like top, you'll notice that it goes all the way to the top. So you can play around with where you want this to be positioned on the screen. So one thing I wanna do before we wrap up is I wanna show you how you're able to actually use material backgrounds as well. And we're going to do this within our overlay. So let's actually just copy this. Cool. And then rather than our background being a capsule that's been filled in red, we're going to actually this time give it a material background. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So as you can see now, this time we actually have our background, but it's actually using the ultra thin material rather than a capsule that's been filled with a color. So you're seeing here that you're able to actually mix and match overlays, backgrounds to create like custom views quite easily here. Overlays and backgrounds in the right context can be quite powerful and allow you to create, you know, custom views very easily so that's everything in this video if you enjoyed it i'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below also as well if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel by hitting the subscription button and the notification bells get updates whenever i release a new video that's everything from me i'll catch you on a bit deuces